The whole education system structures learning so that you study topic A, then topic B, and then topic C. Pick up a textbook, attend a lecture, and sit down to learn pretty much anything, and you'll likely be learning in blocks. But what if I told you that this isn't actually the best way to learn, and the way you've been studying might actually be completely wrong? Let me explain. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Alex, I'm a surgeon with a degree in education, and I'm also the founder and CEO of a few edtech companies. More importantly, I'm absolutely obsessed with learning. Now, before I tell you why studying in blocks the traditional way doesn't really work, let me tell you a quick story about how I came to discover this. So, when I was in medical school, I read the book Make It Stick, and it completely changed how I approached studying. Instead of using traditional ways to prepare for exams like rereading book chapters and taking loads and loads of notes, the book highlighted evidence-based approaches to studying. When I started using techniques like active recall, my exam scores went through the roof, and I went from the bottom of the class to the top while spending less time revising. Now, when I was practicing active recall questions, I noticed that if I read a chapter and then did some recall questions on that chapter straight away, I found those questions pretty easy, because I'd recently covered that material. But if I tested myself again the following day, a lot of the information I'd practiced hadn't actually stuck that well. For us to say we've truly learned something, we need to commit it to our long-term memory, and then be able to apply it, and this all takes effort, which is why self-testing is so important. If things become too easy, we aren't learning that efficiently. Just like how your muscles won't grow if you lift very light weights. The problem with learning in blocks is that when we test ourselves on information we've just covered, that information is still fresh in our minds, and so we're using our short-term memory rather than testing our long-term memory and deeper recall ability. Now, this is where something called interleaving comes in. And so in this video, I'm going to cover what interleaving is, some of the evidence behind it, and some strategies to help you integrate it into your own studying schedule to get better grades. So hit that subscribe button, and let's get into it. So interleaving is a learning strategy that involves mixing up different topics or methods within the study session. For example, if you were studying math, you might interleave your study session by working on problems from multiple chapters, or by alternating between different types of problems, such as solving equations and working with graphs. The idea behind interleaving is that we do a little bit of one topic, and then a little bit of another topic, and a little bit of a third topic, and then we go back to the first, rather than doing three hours of one topic, then three hours of topic two, and then three hours of topic three, or whatever your timing ends up being. There's lots of evidence that interleaving improves retention when it comes to studying for exams, but also learning pretty much anything in general. The book Make It Stick talks about a famous hockey coach who gets his players to do hockey drills, and then just as they're getting the hang of those drills, he switches them onto different exercises. The players have to work a little bit harder, and they don't like it because just as they're approaching mastering a drill, the coach moves them onto something else. But they get results, and the team ends up winning loads of games. The players are then happy in hindsight because they recognize that actually, it's only when stuff is difficult that they're learning deeply. Now, why do you want to do this for studying? Well, there are a few benefits to using interleaving when you're studying anything. One of the biggest benefits is that it forces you to actively recall information from previous study sessions. This is because when you interleave studying, you're regularly switching between different topics, which means that you have to continually retrieve information from your long-term memory. This retrieval practice helps to strengthen our memory and improve our overall understanding of the material that we're covering. Another benefit of interleaving is that it can help you to avoid the so-called blocking effect. The blocking effect occurs when you study one topic for an extended period of time and then switch to a new topic. In this situation, it can be difficult to remember the information from the first topic because your brain has become blocked by the new information. Interleaving can help to prevent this by regularly switching between topics, which keeps your brain from getting blocked by any one topic. Equally, if you don't compare and contrast topics, similar topics can seem confusing if you encounter them in isolation and don't dive into their differences. There are lots of research studies which have shown that we learn better when we're repeatedly exposed to different interleave concepts, rather than blocked ones. Rower in 2012 examined the effect of interleaving on the performance of his students. He found that students who were taught using interleaving outperformed those who were taught using blocked practice. Another study conducted by Cornell and Bjork in 2013 focused on student exam performance. The researchers compared three groups, students who studied a single topic, students who studied two topics at the same time, and students who studied two topics one after another. 
They found that the students who studied two topics at the same time performed significantly better than those who studied only one topic. Even though the students found studying harder in the short term, they did better on the exams in the long term. Rower also conducted a study in 2013 focusing on practical applications in maths. The study noted that most math assignments consist of a group of problems requiring the same strategy. For example, a lesson or book chapter on quadratic formula is typically followed by a block of problems requiring students to use that formula, which means that students know the appropriate strategy before they read each problem as it's in their short-term memory. The study compared this traditional method of studying math problems with an alternative approach, where different kinds of problems appear in an interleaved order, and this required students to choose the best strategy on the basis of the problem itself. The study concluded that interleaving improves learning math not only by improving the distinction between different kinds of problems, but also by strengthening the association between each kind of problem and its corresponding strategy. All of the studies suggest that interleaving is an effective strategy for developing problem solving and categorization skills, which are deeper levels of learning, leading to enhanced long-term retention and increased ability to transmit learned knowledge. The research suggests that interleaving works because it forces retrieval from our long-term memory because each practice attempt is new, so rote responses used from our short-term memory won't help, and in this way it's closely linked to why spacing and active recall are such powerful study techniques. The theory behind this is that when we're blocking stuff, like for example if we're doing math problems, and we're doing lots of the same problem at once, we're just changing the numbers. Our brain starts to then take shortcuts. It starts to realize, oh, okay, that's the method, and then it just starts to apply that method to the subsequent questions. But if we're doing different sorts of problems that are all mixed up, our brain has to take that initial step of thinking, okay, what method do I need to use to solve this problem? The very fact that our brain requires that extra step means that we're more likely to perform better on the exam when the exam is then given later on. In the research, it's also thought that interleaved practice is an effective way to study because of something called contextual interference. Now, an increased contextual interference prompts you to use increased contrast between concepts and learning strategies, which helps you to notice the similarities, differences and connections between concepts more clearly. Interleaving different topics then also helps prevent the confusion that may arise from learning similar topics in complete isolation. So let's now look at how this is different from studying in blocks and then how to actually implement interleaving into your studying effectively. So mixing up and varying your study is completely different from studying in blocks, which involves paying attention to just one type of practice or topic at a single time. Now, I used to study in blocks, and I think most people do, because most books and lessons are structured that way, as it's logical and kind of makes sense to cover things one at a time in an A, then B, then C approach. So typically, when studying or revising for an exam, I do exactly the same thing. I'd maybe block out an hour to do some recall questions on something like blood gas analysis, where I'm using the same principles and equations, and then I'd go through explanations on that same topic and feel like I'd mastered it and then move on. Now, this is good as I'm using active recall and better than just rereading and not actively testing, but it's not the best way to learn. Instead, what I might do is jump around testing myself on different areas of cardiology, not just blood gas analysis, to make things a little bit harder. Because at the exam, we don't usually have a group of similar problems or clinical cases in a row. Everything is mixed together, and we want to be revising and testing ourselves in a similar format to the final exam that we'll be sitting. If I want to make things harder, again, I might bring in questions from different subjects like renal medicine too. The main reason why interleaved practice helps memory formation is that it makes the brain work a little bit harder. When you're trying to learn something, your mind works hard to make sense of what you are trying to remember. At a very biological level, our brains form memories by creating new neural pathways and links, and this is how information is then stored in our long-term memory. These pathways get stronger the more that they're used. When we're passively engaged in thinking about something, we're not really creating any new neural networks, we're just reusing the old ones. Our brains are taking shortcuts, which is what happens when we study in blocks. Even if we're testing ourselves using active recall, we use the same principles and strategies to solve the problems, which is less effort. This means that our brains don't get as many opportunities to create these new neural networks. As a result, our brains then become less efficient at storing memories, and this is where interleaved studying comes into play. By constantly switching between different ways of thinking about the same thing, we're creating more neural networks, and this allows our brain to create more connections and therefore store more memories. Just like if you go to the gym and do the same exercise day after day, you need to switch things up, otherwise you'll plateau and won't grow in strength. 
So how can you actually use interleaving in your studies? Well, you can interleave the topics you're revising, you can mix up the type of questions you're testing yourself on, and you can also mix up how you're actually learning. For me, I'll tend to choose different topics and spread them all through study sessions rather than blocking things out. Now, according to the educational psychologists in the studies mentioned earlier, this strategy is most effective when the topics are related in some way. For instance, in a study session, if I'm studying cardiac physiology and then spend the whole day reading about cardiac physiology, that's pretty suboptimal. Instead, it's way better to split my time up between cardiac physiology, cardiac anatomy and cardiac biochemistry. Maybe in the morning, I'm going to start off with testing myself on ECGs, and then I'll deliberately put in a hard stop and work on a bit of cardiac muscle and valve anatomy, and then I'll revise a mixture of cardiology questions to tie all of these things together. Then I'll go into some renal medicine as it's different but related to blood pressure and the heart, and then just as I've done an hour or so of that, I'll then move on to gastro and I'll try and mix up topics and active recall question types within the study session. And this is where some people overcomplicate things. It's pretty easy to integrate interleave practice, but people get confused because they think they need to switch subjects all the time, or they just don't know where to start. If you have an existing study schedule, it's fine to focus on a subject or topic area you need to improve upon in that study session. While you're blocking out your time to focus on an area you need to study, you're not studying in blocks, as you're mixing up the content topics and types of questions that you're practicing. You're not just doing three hours of revising French vocab on Quizlet, you're mixing in grammar, maybe you're jumping into an audio lesson on Duolingo after 30 minutes on Quizlet vocab, and then maybe you're spending an hour or so doing Spanish. If you're preparing for medical finals or GCSEs or A-levels in the UK, you'll likely have loads of subjects that you need to prepare for. My technique for finals was to jump into question banks early and then just randomize all the questions and work through the recall questions in a similar format to the final exam, where you get questions from any area in medicine. I was taking interleaving into account because this was around about the time that I discovered the technique. If I just did recall questions on a single topic in a row or just read a book chapter and then tested myself on that chapter alone, I knew this was suboptimal. Equally, I'd also try and make sure the question types were mixed up too. So for finals, you have some single best answer style questions, and then also extended matching questions, and maybe some viva or oral questions like you get in an OSCE. So I'd also try and mix these in by spending a few hours doing random SBA and EMQ questions across the whole of medicine, and then switching into OSCE style questions, where I'd do those either online or with my friends to mix up my method of studying too. Now, if medicine isn't your subject, here are a few other examples of using interleaving. If you're studying for a history exam, you might interleave your study sessions by working on different time periods, such as ancient history, medieval history, and modern history, rather than just one after another. And you might switch between writing and learning essays and using flashcards to then learn historical facts. If you're studying for a math exam, you might mix up your study sessions by working on different topics like calculus, geometry, and stats, and also mixing up the difficulty of questions and the types of questions that you're practicing. And if you're studying a language, you might practice vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation all together rather than in isolation, and then mix up between language apps, listening to audio, and reading comprehension. So to wrap things up, interleaving is a really, really valuable learning strategy that can help you to improve your memory and understanding of pretty much anything you're learning, and it's pretty easy to integrate, but it might make things feel a little bit harder when you get started studying, which is actually a really, really good thing. By regularly switching between different topics or methods, you can actively engage your brain and avoid that blocking effect to get better grades and to learn faster. Now, we've covered differentiation of topics in this video, and I actually have a really great video about encoding, which explains differentiation and categorization in more detail, which will pop up right over here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to the channel. Do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and I'll catch you again in the next video.